So I am Ludovic from the University of Bolzano and our paper is, uh, is titled Decision Making Strategy Differ in the Presence of Collaborative Explanation to Conjoint Studies. So this work in, uh, in collaboration with my supervisor Marcus Sankar, Lawrence Rukt and uh, Panagiotis Simonidis. So we'll start just with a short introduction on what collaborative explanations are. So, so collaborative explanations are actually pertinent to the collaborative-based recommended systems and those are subcategory of electronic word of mouth where an item is presented as aggregated behavior of similar users. So on the left side you can actually see an example of what collaborative explanation is. And well, just to go to a short research call, so our objective is actually to understand understand how the collaborative explanations are guiding the user's choices in the online scenario. And we do that because like, we want to understand how to build better recommender systems which could be even more explainable or persuasive or either to de-bias actually the implicit feedback that users are giving on the online scenario. Said so. Uh, we know that as, as hypothesized by Herbert Simmons in the early 50s, actually, there are interpersonal differences between users, and we can actually def defer these users in two categories. Um, for instance, max the maximizers and the satisficers. So they differ the one from the other, because like maximizers are um, searching always the best. So like giving an online scenario, they are always looking, so performing more search. They are Comparing to the others, they spend more time and energy in finding their best options. And, well, they are, most of the times, they are less happy and they are subject to regret. Whereas the satisficer is actually uh, easier to content to satisfy. So, so, like, he will not look longer. He will just, he's not obsessed as a maximizer. And actually, they, at the end of the day, they will be happier with their choices. So, uh, well, lucky. So we, are, we were lucky, actually, because like, there <coughs> exist uh, standardized skills to, to understand where people are belonging to, to which group. And those standardized skills are based on three sub-dimensions. The decision difficulty, alternative search, and high standards. And in our study, we actually controlled for decision difficulty by preventing the user to, perf to search further and we presenting them with item agnostic objects. So what we did, actually starting from, our, from the collaborative explanation, we considered that to be a multi-attribute object and built of several attributes. The explanation itself, so you can see this, how a similar user to you rated this item that is considered to be the explanation and that we compare to the absence of explanation. So this is how all the users rated the items. Then we considered the, the rating summary statistics and its statistical components that are the number of ratings. And the number of ratings is very important actually because it is an indicator of popularity of an item. The mean of the ratings which is an indicator of quality of the item themselves. The variance, skewness and bimodality. So variance, skewness and bimodality can actually, can actually be understood as conflicting opinions of other users on the system. So if you see variance in the rating, so in the, rating, in the distribution of the ratings, you would actually expect that people had contradicting opinions wherever, when they were facing when they were experiencing that hotel. And, well, given multi-attribute items, the user have different strategies when confronting them. And we can divide those strategies in non-compensatory strategy, where, uh, where a user will compare items on an attribute, perform an intradimensional comparisons, perform less comparisons, and these are pertinent to the satisficers and compensatory strategies where the user will be looking to all the attributes, will perform multiple interdimensional comparisons and will spend more time on the items pertinent to the maxi uh, maximizers. And we actually used an A tracker to, to 
throw out how the user actually explored the item set. We will show results later. Uh, then, in order to design our experiment, we borrowed the methodology from economics. Uh, we used the conjoint methodology, which is kind of which is the most used methodology in uh, in design in product design, and it allows us to consider the items as a bundle of attributes, what we were looking for, and it will actually allow us to compute. Uh, a utility contribution of each attribute, it's an additive uh, utility of each attribute, uh, how, so the, the perceived utility of the user on an item. And we actually had a real, real world data set and we drew these levels uh, for items from our data set and we actually give detailed overview of how we did it on the paper, we're going to skip it for now. And we did, we developed two studies, as mentioned in the title of the paper. So the first study was a choice-based study. The user represented, um, represented 16 choice sets. They had to choose between two items. Uh, so we made sure to not favor an attribute level over the other by uh, having balanced choice set, we made sure that the choice sets were orthogonal and we had minimal overlap of the levels. Then we did the usual randomization of the choice sets and, uh, well, we flipped the, the alternatives in the choice set. Then we had study two, actually, where the user were, that was a rank-based um, choice experiment where the user were, were, um, were asked to rank six items and they had three different choice sets. Still, we had the same same approach to prevent uh, uh, favoring a level over the other. So we will quickly look at the results. So we had uh, 241 respondents. All the respondents were acquainted with the online booking scenario. Most of the respondents were of young age. Uh, gen we had gender balance. And we had uh, 199 respondents for study one. And we had 42 respondents for study two. So looking at the poor part worth contribution, so we used the multinomial logistic regression in order to analyze the data collected from the user, so their choices. And we have the first column which represents the attribute name, the second column represents the levels that we presented earlier, third column actually represents the poor part worth contribution of each each attribute to the overall uh, utility in terms of log outs of choosing one level over the other. And the fourth column is obvious, it's the statistical significance. So we understood actually, we, we, it's, it's obvious actually the user based mostly, most, their choice, most of their choices based on the mean value of the ratings, while the number of ratings was the second most important factor in their choices. Um, the, the explanation had impact and uh, variance as expected have a ne negative influence. But when we divided the users in maximizer and satisfizer based on the median split on the decision difficulty, we observed that the gap between the, uh, the part worth estimate of the mean with the number of ratings on, of, on the satisfizer was smaller than the gap on the maximizer, for the maximizers which leads to two uh, assumptions. So the first one is actually that satisfiers are more inclined to trade off between items. And the second assumption would be that the maximizer would go for a simpler decision, decision heuristic, which is in contradiction with theory. And that's why we actually had, at study two, that we attract the users. So for each attribute, we designed some area of interest around, the, the, around them and we actually tried to map the user's behavior to how they observe the attributes. So here we can see an example of a user belonging to the non-compensatory strategy, and you can see how the user is actually exploring the, the objects based on one dimension in order. So this is actually the cognitive process that stands behind how the user are making their decisions. It's very interesting to observe how they look at the items only on one dimension. Uh, while we have the compensatory strategy, and there you can see a user actually how he's exploring, so he's collecting information on, the, on all the attributes in order to build his decision. 
And in order to quantify that, we uh, rely to a Gini index. So we expect that um, sim simplified decision heuristics, like for example the elimination by spec, would be that the tension of a user for the different items is more skewed because like lower ranked alternatives will be eliminated faster. And the Gini index actually is handy here because like it's a measure in of inequity of attention. And we can see, so higher value of the Gini index means higher inequity, lower values of the Gini index mean more equal attention distributed to the items. And then we observe that on the frequency of observation, so how many, how many times the user put the attention on the attribute, and then we observe as well the time that they spend, spend on the attributes. And that we observed actually that satisfizer are observing items more unequally while the maximizer are spending more time on the items are performing more equal observation of, on each item which leads us to conclusions that maximizer so we actually managed to expose these differences between maximizer and satisfizers and we see that rating statistics are actually influencing and biasing the user's choices which is a pity because it's not considered for interpreting user feedback. And our results as well indicate that more specs need to be considered to optimize recommendations based on explainability or persuasiveness. And that would be all. Thank you. Questions? Everybody's tired. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, so you're assuming all the attributes are orthogonal, uh, yeah. but isn't it interesting to study actually the interactive effect between, for example, collaborative explanation and all the other factor? Wouldn't it be something well, to explore? We, so, like the um, the conjoint pathology actually allows us to do that, but well, to be honest, we we didn't have time actually to look at that yet, but. I mean, we, we have the data and we can look at that, so the interaction effects between the attributes as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the question. Thank you. Um, sorry, I wasn't very clear on which uh, features or be gaze behaviors you actually took into account to make the statements about uh, looking more equally at different items uh, versus because sometimes you want to see if there are transitions that allow for comparisons or so on and so forth. If you could elaborate a little bit yes. more about that. So what we did actually, we looked at revisits. And yeah. so we've, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, but, oh, sorry, guys. So, well, so, well, we look at revisits. So how users were revisiting the attribute from one object to the other. So we had items, different items, and different areas of interest on an item. So we knew if a user went from the same dimension of an item to the same dimension of, an item, of the other item. So that is actually... Mm, that is actually this case. So we actually had mapped them so we can understand the revisits of the items from one dimension to the other. And then we could observe as well if the users were looking at the, 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 the interdimensional, making interdimensional observations. So that we measured actually the time on an items and on the attributes. And we could observe actually those differences. So this would be fi fixations, right? Fixations, fixations, yes. You know, yeah, yeah, sure. We went for fixation. Yes, sorry. Yes. Uh, thanks. That's a very interesting uh, research. I, I'm trying to connect to why what is done is actually maybe treated as explanations. Because generally explanations would need to give a rational why this item is given. You provide very nice intelligent interface which gives more information about data. But in fact, it doesn't really explain why this kind of specific recommendation might be given, right? So that is intelligent interface, but probably not explanation unless I miss something. So what did I miss? Well, this is actually based on the work of Herlocker on about collabor explaining uh, collaborative-based recommender systems. And this was how the approach, like the user interfaces that they used in order to, to explain recommender systems. 
and we actually wanted to quantify the, um, the contribution of each attribute that later we could actually try to, to build better explainable recommended systems. So, but, well, to be clear, sorry for the image again, I will just bring it up immediately. So, that was actually based on the first definition of Herlocker on how uh, you explain collaborative based near uh, nearest neighbor based collaborative recommender systems and that is what we wanted to, to measure actually the, the contribution of each attribute All right, so this which was the right side in your study is kind of considered to be explanations right because yeah. there is as explanation uh, there's a lot of th uh, real challenges how similar users to you why actually they are similar users to me there are yeah. a bunch of works which explain why this in your case it's just like, give me more data, but doesn't really explain why this, uh, this stuff is actually uh, was recommended to me. Wait, just, sorry. Yeah. probably can talk later. I mean, that is, that would open to a um, larger study, actually, to understand what similarity means. But, I mean, this is where we started from, and this is what we wanted to build in the future. That's why we wanted to quantify it. I don't know if it... Then we can do it later. Okay. Yeah. So I guess. Just one more. Uh, Just one more. So uh, you found a result. Yeah, thanks for the interesting talk. You found a result that there is a difference between maximizers and satisficers. But do you have an idea how you would adapt your interface to make it better for uh, a maximizer or satisficer if you know what the user is? Yes, actually, so we can measure the part worth contribution of each, uh, for each user uh, individually. And on the paper, we are giving a thorough example of how to regularize matrix factorization in order to provide this kind of recommendation to users singularly and personalize this kind of recommendation for them. Okay. So let us speak our, uh, thank our speaker again. Thank you.